how uh, Teal, his relationship with his brother and, and kind of what influence maybe he's had on, on him during his retro year? Yeah, sure. Um, certainly we've had a long history here of brothers in our program and I'm very, very proud of that. And the, the Teal brothers is another set of them. And, you know, this has been a tough year for Aiden Teal just with having Tommy John surgery last spring and not being able to compete for us this year. But it's great that uh, the two brothers are together. And, you know, Kyle is uh, just such an older, loving brother and cares so much for Aiden. And he's you know, to be here with him this year and providing him support in his freshman year has been great. And, you know, Aiden's a team first guy. And, uh, you know, he's been with us all year. He'll go with us to Omaha, even though he can't compete, because I know that he's going to play a major role in the future of our program. And you hit on this after the game, but uh, Kyle and Jake are very different personalities. Yes. Yet they're, they're very close. Uh, Aiden said they kind of maybe balance each other out sometimes. H how do they work together? They do. I mean, the, the, the Jake Eloff and Kyle Teal have been locked at the hip since they've been here, uh, since they were roommates their first year and, and have continued to be roommates and certainly all, all, both high performers. And they, you know, I think they really play off of each other, you know, and uh, Jake is very, very serious about what he does. They both are, but they go about it in a different way. And, you know, Kyle Teal's spirit is um, one of the best that I've ever been around. He just loves to play the game of baseball. Uh, he plays it incredibly hard and just has a lot of fun doing it. And, um, you know, Jake's a little bit more serious. And you can accomplish great things in this game with either, either approach. Have you heard uh, Kyle's guitar playing or DJing? Oh, I, l let me tell you, I saw Kyle's guitar playing on stage at the Step Up the Plate event this year. If you have not went online and looked at it, you have to. His ability to play the guitar and sing is uh, remarkable. I am fully aware of Kyle Teal's ability to DJ because I can tell you his, uh, his freshman year in the dorms, on two different occasions, I was uh, approached by the Dean of Students uh, <laughs> regarding uh, issues of loud music being played in the dormitory. And um, it was Kyle Teal's speaker. So on the second occasion, I told Kyle that he has two hours to get that speaker over to my office. And that uh, is the largest speaker I've ever seen. Uh, I don't know why you'd have it in a dorm room, but um, apparently he was playing it loud enough that he could hear it at the dorm next to his. And so it lived in my office for the remainder of the year. And um, he, you know, he came and picked it up. Uh, later on and um, you know so many of one of the many stories about young Kyle Teal and uh, how much fun he is to be around. You got any use of that speaker? You got any use out of it what was in your office? No it didn't. No. I didn't. Um, you know I, I just sat there uh, just because I wanted to make sure it wasn't in his dorm room. I might have said a few things on it but um, you know it just speaks to how much that young man loves life and how much fun he has and what what he does and um, he's just great around people, and uh, I just love him to death. Kyle, you may have uh, addressed this with the group. I just, yeah. so sorry about that, but yeah. uh, Ethan Anderson. I mean, what's he meant to you guys? I mean, he seems hmm. to be, you know, one of your one of your best hitters and a guy who can depend yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, first and foremost, um, I feel so fortunate that Ethan decided to enroll at UVA an entire year early. That's incredibly rare. Certainly, you have to be a great student and a great person to be able to accomplish that. And he made an immediate impact in our in our program. Wasn't able to play summer ball because of a hand surgery that he needed to have, and he came back this year uh, much improved uh, from last year. He's a phenomenal hitter that plays at great first base and can catch for us as well. And I just, the fiber and the character of Ethan Anderson, you know, you can see it on the field, but being around him every day, you can see what grown up in a household of a Navy SEAL has um, benefited him. He's, uh, Ethan Anderson is buttoned up. He's very professional. He's very serious about what he does. And uh, you can see how he grew up living all over the world um, and the impact that that's had on him. And he's completely comfortable and confident in, in the environment. And I'm just glad he's wearing our uniform. And then Harrison, uh, he's a freshman, working yeah. his way into your lineup and yeah. making some contributions. There. Yeah, Harrison Didowick has had a tremendous year for us. Um, really, really glad that he's here as well and has a, had a tremendous impact, playing a great left field. He's a tremendous defender, has done a great job, uh, you know, swinging the bat for us and put him back in there in game two of the Super Regional. He had a great day, had a great game in game three, and I think you'll see more of him when we're out in Omaha in left field. Kyle talked about walking out in Omaha to that national anthem. Yeah. Just kind of 
feel? How much does it help to have a couple guys that have gone through that in your experience? Yeah, I, think, I, I certainly think it helps having players that have played in Omaha before, and the, the couple of guys that we have had do that were integral in that, in that run in 21 and in our performance in Omaha, and having them understand and be able to share with their teammates about the feelings they're going to have standing on that field on Friday night at 6 p.m. when they play the national anthem in front of the largest crowd they've ever played in before, um, have an experience doing that and then being able to share it with their teammates is really important. You had record-setting attendance this year. What type, yeah. of, what type of crowds are you expecting in Omaha? What type <laughs> of support are you expecting in Omaha? I'm, I'm expecting really good support. Um, we've always had good support. I know a lot of fans from out here are heading out. Uh, you know, going to the College World Series can present its challenges. Hotel rooms are very, very expensive. Flights are tough to get and, you know, people do everything they can to to, to get out there and fortunately this is our sixth t time going out there in a short period of time and you know I know the fans of Omaha are familiar with our ball club and I expect Friday night in that stadium I expect every seat to be sold because it's a matchup of two really great ball clubs. When you and Drew were sitting back and looking at what you wanted to target as far as in the transfer portal, yeah. what were you guys looking for and kind of how did these guys fit into what you guys Well, were I mean, we were certainly looking for some transfer arms that had shown previously that they have the ability to pitch at this level and wanted a new opportunity at the at the highest level of college baseball. So, you know, we're in the midst of that right now, too, of looking what are the opportunities for next year. And it's about fill, filling holes that um, you have in your roster. We, NCAA baseball has roster limitations. You can't go over that, so you're only allowed a certain amount of players. And, you know, we were very, very targeted last year with what we were looking for. And I'm fortunate, we're fortunate that the, the young men uh, from the pitching staff decided to come here and they've ma certainly made a huge impact. How did your ACC schedule prepare you yeah. for a team that you haven't faced this year before? Yeah. Yeah, sure. I mean, Florida is a, a really talented ball club in every facet of the game. Um, it's going to take everything from us to be successful against them. Uh, but I believe our league prepares us. Every weekend in this league is a challenge, and you got to play your best baseball. If you don't, you get swept like we did it at Notre Dame. And so, you know, the depth of the league over my time here, 20 years at Virginia, has just improved so much. And so that prepares you for opportunities like the last two weekends and certainly prepares us to have success in Omaha. Coach, you mentioned 20 years here, and this is the sixth yeah. College World Series. Is, is it just hard to just think about just a little more than a fourth of your time here, you're playing in Omaha? Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's a lot to think about. I'm, you know, I, I'm so proud that the amount of trips that we've made to Omaha, I think you all know how very, very difficult it, it is to do. There's a, so many programs that care about their college baseball programs that are highly funded, and certainly we're one of them. And to be able to reach the pinnacle of our sport uh, to go to Omaha and compete for a national championship, I'm just incredibly proud. And, uh, you know, and I'm looking forward to this team, this year's group, uh, to have this opportunity because it's about them. You know, um, I will be back as the coach at Virginia next year and for many years to come, and there will be other opportunities that we might have to do this. But this team, these players that are on this team, this is their opportunity. I'm so excited for them to step on that field. You I think you said uh, the other day that in your 20 years, there's only had been two recruiting classes that yeah. didn't make it to Omaha. How, how much do you use that in your recruiting pitches when you go in the living room? Well, um, certainly our trips to Omaha and the success that we have had getting there and having success when we're there is something that we certainly use and share with recruits and families when they make the decision to come here. You know, I believe that they make the decision to come to Virginia for three reasons. First, it's one of the best educations in the country. Secondly, they want to play in the major leagues, and we uh, take a lot of pride in developing that skill for them to have that opportunity. And, opportunity. and thirdly, is they want to compete for a national championship. And when you've proven over a number of years that there's a high percentage chance that during their t time here that they'll have a chance to go to Omaha. Uh, that's something that's a goal for every young player. Brian, how much, uh, is it a full circle moment taking John Hendry <laughs> on this trip when you consider his yeah. dad and what he's meant to you and how he coached you there and now you're taking his son 
as yeah, much. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited for John Hendry to be in our dugout uh, this weekend. He's been on our staff for two years. Um, his father, Jim, gave me an opportunity to come play college baseball at Creighton and changed my life. Um, not with the opportunity, with what I learned from him as a player. And Jim Hendry is the reason I'm in college coaching because of the profound impact he made on my life. And I, when my playing career was over, I decided I want to do what that guy does. Mm -hmm. And so when uh, Johnny graduated um, from college and his el eligibility was up, I reached out to him and asked him if he wanted to be a college coach, and, and that's what he wanted to do. And it was my opportunity to uh, pay my mentor back to give his son an opportunity to get into this business. And I'm forever grateful for that because John Hendry's a worker. He's the first guy in the office and the last one to leave. And if you take that approach as a young coach, you will be highly successful, and he will be. Jim, Two more questions, the, guys. Two more questions. Yeah, Jim was here for the Super Regionals. He was. How much did you get to talk to him and just kind of, what was that like, uh, kind of having him back around this program? Well, uh, he, Jim was actually here for the Miami series as well. Uh, he reminded me that he was 3-0 and in that series. Um, he forgot that when, he, when we were at Miami last year, he was 0-3. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm around him as, as, as much as I can be. We talk all the time. We text each other. Uh, like I said, Jim Hendry is uh, one of my biggest mentors in, in the game, and I lean on him a lot. And um, I'm just grateful for our relationship. It was so great that... Um, you know, him and his wife were able to be here this past weekend to share the weekend with us. And I know that he'll be there in Omaha for every pitch. Uh, that's what he, where he calls home now, even though he does work for the Yankees. He, uh, Omaha is, st is still his home. Is there any concern with Jay Wolfuck after the football work and then all the time that he may physically be wearing down at all? I'm not concerned about Jay Wolfuck at all. Um, it's it's not a physical thing. Um, you know, he's he's working on some things. I think he's really really close. The reality is for us to have success in in Omaha, Jay Wolfuck's going to need to deliver for us, and and he will. I've got complete confidence in him. Sometimes guys go through whether whether it's hitting or pitching. Um, you know, a tweak here or there that has to happen mechanically, or it might be the, what, what they're thinking about in the batter's box or on, on the pitching mound. And I've got full confidence in Jay Wolfolk, and he'll be out there in the right situation, uh, and, and we need him.